Welcome to problem 9 of the Computer Science 121 2013 Winter 2 Practice Final Exam. So, sets and functions. Consider the set A, which is the set containing 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 99. Uh, so that's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so on and so forth. 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. Okay, I won't list all of them. That would take a while. And B is the set containing the values true, false, and unknown. Is the empty set a member of A? Okay, well, to find out whether something's a member, you basically just crack the set open and look inside. So it contains things like 2, 3, 4, 65, uh, 80, and 99. Uh, the empty set is not one of those numbers. The empty set is something else. So the answer is no. The empty set is not in here. And if you wanted the empty set to be in here, you would put it in there. You could say something like A contains the empty set and 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 99. And here you could see the empty set right here, but it's not in here. And so it does not contain that. Is the empty set a subset of B? So subset means something different from members. We're asking a different question here. When we ask, is one set a subset of another, we're asking, is every element in the first set a member of the second set? And the empty set has nothing in it, so we have to understand what we mean when we say, is every member of this thing that has nothing in it a member of subset B? So think about like if you had a list of things you had to study each day. Okay, but every once in a while you gave yourself a day where you didn't have anything on your list, right? And your job is every day to study everything on your list. Well, if your list has 30 things on it and you go through all 30 things and study them all one day, then you successfully completed your list, right? You studied everything on your list. But when you come to your day off, you know, Saturday, Sunday, something like that, and your list is empty, have you successfully studied everything on your list? Well, yes, you have. So with the empty set, when we ask, is everything in the empty set a member of B, the answer is just, yes, it is, by default. The empty set is a subset of everything. That is unlike membership. The empty set is only a member of sets where it is actually a member. But the empty set is a subset of every set. So the answer to this question is yes, and we don't even have to look at B to be able to answer that. OK, give a one-to-one -one or injective function f that maps from a, so a is the domain, to b, b is the codomain, or explain why no such function exists. So we want a one-to-one -one function. It's going to take each element of a, and it's going to give each of them their own element in b. No two elements are going to go to the same element in b. And there is no way we're going to be able to do that. I mean, imagine just for a moment that you said, oh, well, 2 goes to true, 3 goes to false, 4 goes to unknown. You're already out of things in b. 5 and 6 and 7 and so on and so forth up to 99. They have nowhere to go. Uh, and so we can't write an injective function from A to B. So none exists because the cardinality of A is greater than the cardinality of B. OK. Give an onto or surjective function f mapping a to b, uh, or explain why no such function exists. So we want something that will cover all of the elements in b. Everything in b will have something mapping to it. So let's just have, um, we'll define it by cases. That's a nice, easy way to define it. So f of 2 will be equal to true, and f of 3 will be equal to false. And f of 4 will be equal to unknown. And f of n will be equal to true for all other n in a. And that function will map to true, and it'll map to false, and it'll map to unknown, and we really don't care about the rest of these values. Once we've covered everything, we've got a surjective function. We just have to make sure that they all have some value. So I just chose true. OK. Give a one-to-one -one injective function that maps from b back to a. 
or explain why no such function exists. So now we're going to want to go from B to A, and we're going to make sure that no two elements in B map to the same element in A. And we've got plenty of room for that, so we can just say f of true is equal to 10. Doesn't really matter, choose anything you want, as long as you don't choose the same thing twice. f of false is equal to 50. And f of unknown, let's go all the way up to 99. And that's an example of an injective function, but there's a lot of them. Okay. Give a surjective function mapping from b to a, or explain why no such function exists. Uh, this is this is kind of the same as the question that we answered just off the top of the screen here about an injective function from A to B. To get from B to A and make that surjective, we've got to cover everything in A. But there's almost 100 elements in A, and there's only three elements in B. So we don't have enough. Uh, so none exists because the cardinality of B is less than the cardinality of A. What is the cardinality of the power set of A? Uh, well, the cardinality of A is... All right, be careful, everyone. Uh, if it was 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, 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 99, then it would have 99 elements in it. Just like if it was 1, 2, 3, 4, it would have 4 elements in it. 1, 2, 3, and 4. But it's missing 1, so it actually has one fewer element than that. So the cardinality of A is 98. Um, and the cardinality of the power set of a set is 2 to the cardinality of that set. So this is going to be 2 to the 98th. And thank goodness we do not have to write it, because that would take forever. OK, what is the power set of B? Hopefully B is not as big. B had, what in it, true, false, and unknown? You know what, I am just going to write T, F, and U for short. Because I'm going to have to write a lot of these using T, F, and U for short forms. OK, <clears throat> so the power set of B is equal to the empty set. That's our zero element list. We should have a one element list. By the way, I like to do it this way, zero element list, one element list, two element list, three element list. Um, but if you have any trouble at all doing it that way, just make that truth table that we talked about in the slides, where you've got an entry for you know your variable t, an entry for f, an entry for u, and you say like true, 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 false, true, false, true, and so on and so forth. And you know how to make a truth table. And then you just say, this corresponds to is t in the set or not? This corresponds to is f in the set. This corresponds to is u in the set. And then you can write out the sets. So the first one has all three. And the second one has just the first two, t and f. And the third one has just the first and the third, t and u. And so on and so forth. And you'll get all of your sets that way. So that is a totally reasonable way to approach the problem. Um, I, I find it a little bit faster and easier for myself to do it this way, but I suspect for most people it's, uh, if not necessarily faster to do it this way, it's easier to get it right doing it this way. So do it, do it the way that works for you. But I'm going to erase these so they don't distract me. Okay. okay. Now, so that's my zero element sets. My one element set, there's going to be three one element sets. One for T, one for F, one for U. And then I've got my two element sets. I'm going to have three of those two. T and F, T and U, F and U. And then lastly, I've got my one three element set, T. And that's it. That is my power set. And I can check the cardinality. I know it should be 2 to the cardinality of b. 2 to the third is 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So that looks pretty good. In terms of a and b, what is the domain 
and codomain of a function f that takes a natural number greater than 1 and less than 100 and produces, okay, so hold on, I'm going to stop right there because that's where my arrow is. It takes this, it produces this. Okay, so it takes a natural number greater than 1 and less than 100, 2 to 99, that, that's my set A, so it's going to take in A, and it's going to produce either the Boolean value true if the number is composite and the number's largest factor, oh, and the nar number's largest factor, or the Boolean value false if the number is prime and the number itself. So for example, f of 2 produces false in 2, f of 28, because 28 is not prime, it's 4 times 7, uh, produces true and the largest factor, which is 14. Okay. Okay. So it's going to produce a true false value and also a number in that order. So that's going to be a cross product. And the first thing it produces is that true false value. That's that's something from B. It's not producing an unknown, um, but A and B are the only sets we have available, so we'll use B anyway. Uh, and then it's producing a number, and that number is between 2 and 99, because uh, the largest factor is going to be a prime factor 2 or larger, and it's certainly going to be no more than 99, because 99 is the largest number of factoring. So that would be B cross A. There we go.